our next speakers very excited about um, Lindley Danner is the food production manager for Aramark in Pflugerville ISD um, and she's been an active participant in Aramark's Go for the Gold menu committee, a group dedicated to the implementation of the Healthier U.S. School Challenge, Gold Level Menu Standards company-wide. So she's going to be sharing some of their programs and successes there in Pflugerville. And then also we have Chef Patrick Sandoval, who I can't say enough about. Um, I had the pleasure and privilege of watching him do a cooking demo for kids at a Fuel Up to Play 60 event. And I'm not kidding you, some of the kids, when they found out Chef Patrick was coming, their heads were just like, <gasps> and they were hyperventilating, and it was so exciting. So he not only does demos for the kids, but the community through his program, Chef Patrick's Pals, um, and he'll be doing a fun demo for you as well. But I will hand this over now to Lindley. Hi, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about modern school, school food service. Uh, we've talked about the different regulations coming out so far um, this morning. So with all these regulations coming out, there's a lot of changes that we have to see in our kitchens and in our schools. So we're going to just discuss uh, what we're doing in Pflugerville and around um, Aramark. Okay, thank you. Um, to meet these guidelines and hopefully in time to help these kids become healthier. Okay, so uh, introduction, a little bit about me. I am a dietitian. Um, I graduated with a nutrition uh, degree from Texas State University in San Marcos, and then I went on to Texas Women's University to do my dietetic internship, where I then did two internships um, at Dallas ISD. Um, I was an intern junkie for a while, uh, trying to get as much um, um, knowledge and background as I could before I got into the workforce. So um, I did my food service um, internship at Dallas ISD and then I went on to do my school nutrition specialist internship through Dallas ISD. So I'm really happy to see Dora here today um, and be part of this event. Um, we'll talk about some Aramark and Pflugerville initiatives, some challenges that we face as we kind of discussed this morning. Um, getting parents involved, getting the community involved, how we're meeting those challenges and facing them and hopefully finding solutions for them. And then um, how you can support change in your community. And then finally, we'll turn it over to our celebrity here. Um, he's much more fun than me, so uh, that, that's coming up. Okay, so Aramark, um, we are the leading service provider for in school districts na nationwide. We actually are in 650 school districts. We, depending on what the school district needs, we can provide everything from the full management of their food service department to just the um, just doing some um, different consulting for the food service department. We can do facilities. We do um, all different types of support services, um, depending on what that school district needs. Um, we currently serve 3.7 million students, and it comes out to 340 million uh, school, school meals a year, which we think is really, really um, exciting. Um, when it comes to Pflugerville, Aramark has been in Pflugerville for 17 years. We employ over 200 different employees that run the food service department. We run the complete food service department. So we have area supervisors, we have marketing managers, uh, human resources directors, and uh, dietitians, um, a couple different chefs, and um, so we have a really well-rounded um, management team. Okay, time for the fun stuff. What we do to promote healthy eating. Uh, last year, we rolled out our gold standard menu across all of the south central region of Aramark, which um, includes 52 different school districts in Texas. We based it on the Healthier U.S. School Challenge, which we learned about earlier. So it meets all of the guidelines for the gold standard or the gold award of distinction. Um, we're currently going through the process of applying for these awards. The gold award of distinction based, is based on um, you also have to meet... Um, average daily participation, so we don't know if we're actually going to get that award. We're going to go for it in the schools that we can, but um, we're definitely going to apply for one or two awards um, throughout the district. Um, so our gold menu, 
Um, it's something that really emphasizes, var emphasizes variety, um, whole grains, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, our Go For More is a program that, we, that is specific to Aramark. Uh, Healthy for Life is an Aramark initiative that gets parents and kind of um, gets the nutrition education, kind of handles that department. Um, we are definitely involved in CATCH, and we have some um, CATCH leaders here today. Uh, healthy, what we do to promote health in our cafeterias, and then our public relations efforts. So a little bit more about our gold standard menu. Um, we implemented it last September, and I know Beth talked about this morning about um, having some trouble, like seeing participation drop. We like went all whole grain. We had three different fresh fruits and vegetables on every day. We went from like in our secondary schools, we went from three entrees to twelve. Um, homemade pizzas and everything. Um, and we did have some trouble like with parents not like they, they were, wondered where the steak fingers were and things like that. So um, we, it's definitely about finding a balance. Um, we think we have, uh, but we're definitely not giving up. We're not backtracking. We're gonna continue to move forward. Um, we have deli and salad options every single day. And my favorite part is it's not just iceberg lettuce anymore, but it's actually romaine, greens, and um, some salad greens, some better salad greens. Um, and then definitely incorporating more from scratch entrees, which is tough because these, um, a lot of our cafeteria workers are used to, you know, heat and serve the processed stuff. Um, so it definitely takes some chefs coming in and doing some training with our employees to teach them, you know, some basic culinary skills that are required for these um, types of recipes. Uh, this is our second year with this um, gold standard menu. We saw, you know, we had some trouble at the beginning, like I mentioned, but man, our participation still continues to grow. This year our meals are really, um, really growing. Our kids are really excited um, because they're actually, we put hummus on the menu last year and they didn't know what it was. And, but now, and you know, some, some of the cafeteria managers are like, just take it off the menu. But I'm not, we're not doing that yet. Um, or we're not doing it at all. Um, I don't care if we have to call it bean dip because, you know, it's, it's important that it's there and it's important that they learn what these foods are, especially when they're little. Um, I ate nothing when I was little and it took me years and years and years to finally develop a palate for different types of foods. And so it's great if they can start off learning their palate. Okay, our Go For More program. Um, this is a program that is specific to Pflugerville. We started it there about four years ago. It is the neatest program, I think. Um, any kid that buys a reimbursable meal gets to come back for extra free sides of fresh fruits and vegetables. So they're all fresh, no canned, um, and we've definitely increased the variety as we implemented this gold standard menu. So, you know, it's not just baby carrots every day, but there's broccoli and cucumbers and zucchini, and I hadn't even never had fresh zucchini, and it's actually really good. Um, so uh, definitely increasing the variety. It um, supports nutritious snacking, which is, you know, really important for the kids. Uh, we don't want them always going back for chips if they're still hungry, but learning to go back for the healthier things and to fill up on those things first. And um, we have a Cool Calf Dining brand that, promote, that provides these um, little carts that are in the corner of every cafeteria in our elementary schools. So um, the kids don't have to come back through the line, but they have their own little cart that they go to to get their oranges and apples and things like that. Healthy for Life is an Aramark um, educational program. It embodies all aspects of um, nutrition marketing. This is one way that we get things out to parents. So in every single school in Pflugerville, when you walk into the, um, the office, um, there is a kiosk that has all different types of recipes and nutrition education and you know just basic information that every parent needs to know in, a, in um, addition to our menus and the information is updated every month so we think that hopefully this is a way to help get the parents um, a little bit more involved um, in addition to sending home these kinds of materials which we also do 
Um, Healthy for Life, we are starting to use social marketing. The technology is everywhere, and we think that that's one way that we can get involved and reach those parents, too, is through social marketing. So we have a Facebook page where we um, get parents, and we put information on, and we like allow parents to put information on. Um, we put recipes and nutrition education and other things that are going on in our um, cafeterias so the parents know and can get involved. Catch. We are huge supporters of Catch. Um, we definitely partner with them with a lot of different things. They, for, I don't know if everyone knows what they is, Catch is, but I'm sure you do, but um, it's a research-based research -based program that brings together schools, families, the community, and it not only provides like the education, but it also provides training in the cafeterias and for the teachers and things like that, which we think is really important. Um, We've done a lot of different things to help catch, um, including a catch middle school coordination guide. One of our um, employees got, um, did the training and um, um, a video and that you can see for different catch training. Um, and catch pilot programs, which includes a fruits and vegetable consumption program where we tracked all the fruits and vegetables that are eaten at our elementary school, two of our elementary schools and two of our middle schools. So they use that information to go forward with their, with their program. Um, we also obviously label our lines with Go Slow Woe and our menus in um, elementary schools and middle schools. Um, a really funny story about Go Slow Woe is I know a kid that was at a Mexican restaurant and um, a couple weeks ago and he um, was asking about the chips and he was like, are these Go chips or are they slow chips? So, um, you know, this, this Go Slow Woe is really catching on and uh, kids definitely know what it is and they're talking to their parents about it, which is really exciting. Okay, healthy promotions. Um, every month we do um, an a la carte, or I'm sorry, a healthy entree um, with different themes. So um, this month we're doing International Street Food Month because obviously carts and street food is really important or really growing in popularity. So we um, are doing like a whole grain brown rice, um, a fried rice out of uh, brown rice and making some, like types of those recipes new for the kids and making them healthy so they could try new things. Uh, we have a discovery fruit and vegetable each month. Um, you can see on the side it's meat asparagus. So our lovely marketing manager who's down here, um, she makes cute little guys like this and um, it teaches you about um, trying new foods. Kids probably don't like asparagus, but they're gonna try it. And, uh, and they're gonna like it when they see us eating it and with us promoting it and things like that. So um, we do monthly nutrition posters in our dining rooms. We do a holiday bike giveaway. And um, a new thing we started this year is nutritious food taste testing, which is really neat. Some of our made from scratch entrees um, you know, they're whole wheat pasta and the kids don't really, they don't really go for them. We don't see a high participation in those things. So we want them to taste them and um, every month we do it at an elementary school. So we bring in some little kids, uh, probably first grade, second grade, and have them taste the food and we do a nutrition education lesson. So I went to one last week and it was really neat. The kids, we were doing a, um, a whole grain veggie meatball pasta um, and the ki a couple of them were like, I don't like it. Um, so I sat down with them and told them about it, told them why it's healthy for them, and then I tasted it, and I was like, ooh, this is good. And they were like, oh, I think I like it. <laughs> it was like, so, you know, watching us, definitely, you know, the kids learn from us. So um, it's a one way for us to get involved, too, and um, help the kids learn some healthy eating habits. Okay, public relations. It's definitely important to um, promote our program, um, especially because of the way that the, um, the public perceives food, our school food sometimes. So we do health fairs, uh, Chef Patrick's Pals, um, more on that in a minute. Uh, we are very involved in SHAC and our PTO. 
social media marketing and positive media attention. We try to run um, a different news um, story at least once or twice a year. Um, I know I've been on the news twice. We were on 101X, the morning show, um, talking about school food because they were bashing school food. And our marketing manager called in and we're like, uh, we have really great school food and it's really healthy and it also tastes good. So we went in and had them try it and uh, it, it was a neat experience. So facing challenges, um, definitely the first two, competing with fast food and parents' perception. Um, these are things that obviously is going to be a challenge and it's going to continue to be a challenge. We know that the nation is definitely moving towards like getting that healthy message out, but we still see lots of kids eating pizza you know, for dinner a couple nights a week and fast food and the quick entrees and things like that. So. Um, that is definitely going to continue to be an, a challenge. We definitely think parents are the key. And um, if I could say anything, it's probably that to get parents to realize that what they eat is what their kids want to eat. Um, so get, if you eat more fruits and vegetables, then your kids are going to eat more fruits and vegetables and kind of getting that message out. Um, budget constraints and uh, federal reimbursement rate, as these new um, stricter regs are coming out, it's going to be harder to, you know, whole grains cost more than, you know, not whole grains. So um, definitely working that balance into, the, into your budget. And then um, we all have government commodity foods that we have to use in school nutrition. They're getting better, and there's definitely getting more um, whole grains and you know canned fruit with light uh, or with juice instead of light syrup and things like that but still um, it continues to be a challenge so supporting your community we already sort of touched on some of these things but um, getting involved in SHAC every SHAC committee in the state is technically supposed to have like half of the people or the, um, are supposed to be parents. And I know we have a challenge with it in Pflugerville getting that many parents in. Um, so um, anyway, we need more parents to get involved. Um, sign up for um, your nutrition's department's mailing list. Uh, join your PTO. Definitely come eat lunch in school. That's the best way to know what your kids are eating and what we're serving and to see that we're actually are making some changes for the good. And then um, study the menu and help your kids choose some healthy eating um, items.